My name is Dan Sig. I live and practice medicine in Spokane, Washington. I will be speaking about my paper titled A Linkage Analysis Toolkit for Studying Allosteric Networks and Ion Channels. The aim of this video tutorial is to demonstrate a straightforward method for determining the most useful elements in a linkage plot, namely the linear asymptotes. The vertical displacement between negative and positive asymptotes yields energies of interaction between regulatory or gating domains, and the limiting slopes represent a displacement to the applied force. Consider an ion channel gated by both voltage and ligand concentration. The core of the channel is made up of four interconnected P or pore particles embedded in the membrane. Activation of the lightly charged pore is the basis for ion conduction in the channel. Each P particle is linked to two other modular components, a dedicated voltage sensing J particle and a ligand binding K particle. The combination of self interactions P, P, and K, K, in addition to heterologous interactions, JP, KP, and JK give rise to a highly cooperative gating network. The 12 gating particles represent the activated states of physical domains. The goal of linkage analysis is to measure the energies of interaction linking these domains. This is different from the task of kinetic modeling, which is to fit rate constants assigned to transitions between microstates. Our model channel has nearly 3,000 energetically distinct microstates, so writing down and solving the kinetic equations of gating is extremely impractical. On the other hand, obtaining the partition function z, or sum of states, is much easier. With z at hand, one is quickly able to derive... That emphatic stamp of disapproval notifies us that, for this model at least, z remains an unwieldy function. Our imaginary math sensor is right. We don't need to know z to derive useful quantities in a linkage plot. These are found in the asymptotes at curves called work functions. The work function is the heart of the linkage plot. It is the energy needed to selectively activate a principal particle while maintaining other particles at equilibrium. Under extreme conditions, only the principal particle activates. We start with the 4K particles viewed here from inside the cell, where a negative membrane potential has been applied, forcing P and J particles into their resting states. The work function for K activation derives from the traditional Hill plot of ligand binding. At near zero ligand concentration, only one molecule binds at a time. Thus, the negative asymptote is simply the energy of activation of a single K particle. It has a fixed Gibbs energy and a sloping chemical potential term. For increasing concentration of ligand, the binding function rises in sigmoidal fashion until we arrive at the positive asymptote. Here, the function is dictated by the last of the four K particles to activate, and includes the previous terms plus the negative interaction energy between the principal particle and its two ligand-bound neighbors. Subtracting, we see that the KK interaction energy is determined by the vertical displacement between positive and negative asymptotes. Next, we activate all P and J particles by depolarizing to very positive voltages, and once more evaluate the work function. This generates new asymptotes elevated by the negative combined contributions of KP and JK interaction energies. Turning to the P particles, which like K particles are self-interacting, we would like to put into place constraints that make the open probability independent of PP interactions. One way to do this is to apply energy offsets to activated P particles, shown here as black circles, such that the number of interactions and offsets exactly match in the open channel and their energies cancel. This raises the energies of intermediate subconductance states for which activations exceed interactions. In extreme cases, the energies of the intermediate states are large enough that pore opening becomes a de facto two-state or binary process. As we did for K particles, we now evaluate asymptotes for pore or P linkage. The P work function is derived from the equilibrium conductance curve or GV curve. The low energy asymptote is composed of the negative Gibbs energy, a sloping voltage-dependent term, 
and the negative offset energy of the first p particle to activate. Upon depolarizing the membrane to very positive potentials, the high energy asymptote consists of the previous terms minus two pp interaction energies from the last p particle to activate, as well as the negative jp interaction derived from voltage sensor poor coupling. The difference between these two limiting functions is again visualized as the vertical displacement between asymptotes. Increasing ligand concentration to saturating levels raises the zero ligand asymptotes by an amount equal to the kp interaction energy. We note that for very strong pp interactions, the true asymptotes would be visible only at extreme voltages, whereas under normal small voltage conditions, we would measure steeper asymptotes that satisfy the binary poor approximation, and whose vertical displacement in response to voltage does not include a contribution by pp interactions that are responsible for the large separation in true asymptotes. So far we have considered work functions for single particles. I will now briefly discuss functions related to generalized displacements, such as gating charge. The work function related to gating charge displacement is derived from the equilibrium gating charge, or QV curve. Measuring the area subtended by the shift of the QV curve in response to a change from zero to saturating ligand concentration yields the total energy of interaction between charge carrying and ligand binding elements in the channel. The electrical work function equals the product of total gating charge and the characteristic midpoint voltage, Vm. The corresponding linkage plot is a function of ligand concentration. The vertical separation between asymptotes equals the previously described area between QV curves. An analogous graph for a separate experiment generating a plot of median ligand binding capacity versus voltage generates the same vertical displacement. This is an excellent example of reciprocal relations between linked functions, as described by Jeffries Wyman 50 years ago. To summarize, the asymptotes of ligand binding and electrophysiological work functions have simple interpretations even for extensive gating networks, and from the vertical displacement of asymptotes we can extract the two self-interaction and three heterologous interaction energies in our allosteric model. The slopes of asymptotic lines yield additional information in the form of generalized displacements, for example, the gating charge of poor particles. Thank you for listening to this video tutorial. I very much hope you enjoy the paper.